Damn. Nope, I didn't get in it. Oh well. Oh yeah, there it is. Alright. Okay. Hi, this is Kubi Pistaino for Yapcot and I'm here with Doug Blair. We're sitting in the hotel lobby. How you doing? Doing great. It's you got been, some cookies. Been, I got some cookies. My favorite hotel here. My favorite home away from home in Tampra. We've had a whirlwind. We started in Russia on, oh God, Thursday morning and traveled through Finland, Denmark, and to Sweden, and then played Sweden Rock. Friday night, came up here, yeah. played, played um, South Park. Yeah. Yeah. Saturday night, and then yesterday did a cool thing for the Tampere Guitar Festival, a little workshop with my guitar, so it was really great. Yeah, yeah. and you were, you were telling this is the first time you have all your uh, these guitars with you in one yeah, this. It's been the first time I've had this many guitars in any one place. They're spread all over the place. There's like five in Los Angeles and 20 in Boston and seven in Stockholm. Rota. So it's nice to have them all in the same room and to be able to show what they do and stuff. They're all a little bit different in what they do. How do you come about uh, getting new guitars? Like uh, somebody recommends something to you or you just go shop around? or uh, how do you well, usually get That's an rack? interesting question because I rarely ever get any new guitars. I finally got an endorsement <coughs> an endorsement with ESP guitars just this past year and I have two of them I was gonna take them out and stick them here but oh, these are enough for right now <laughs> but I finally got three brand new guitars for free never had that ever and the last time I bought a, a guitar new was in like 1995 I bought a Gibson Les Paul that is now like my main studio guitar okay. so but I modified it a lot I did all the same things that kind of art you know I did the headstock so it doesn't look like Gibson anymore yeah, yeah. so you so you also also like the visual side of guitars oh I love to love to oh. modify them and make them different and you know it's such you, a cool craft it's always evolving and you have like your own guy or are you, you do it no, I do this myself oh, yeah man. I wish I had my own guy <laughs> actually I got a bunch of guys that help me out a little that's really important yeah but I don't have any one guy that does kind of all the work I'm looking for always looking for guys that you know have a little bit more expertise in whatever aspect that I don't understand I'm more of a player and I can do you know basic woodworking and, and yeah. basic stuff but nothing really you know to build a gorgeous brand new thing like that I'm always piecing things together and these are all total you know we call I call them guinea pigs because I try everything out oh, on them cool, cool. Yeah. and they're really kind of thrown together mongrels this one is more of a Kind of final, you know, a finalized design. After a few prototypes, that's a kind of a production double neck that I built. So that one wouldn't need to be changed very much anymore. Hopefully. Yeah. Unless, unless you get a vision again. Yeah, I get in more the ideas. Of the night. Right. <laughs> yeah. The thing about uh, when you're sort of like building guitars, modifying guitars, is uh, you don't always know what you want. Like you might change your mind. You know? Well, that's true. I'm always drawing pictures and kind of planning things ahead and then, you know, taking it step by step. This one, for example, has been through, I don't know, 15 different versions to get to where it is now. Same with this thing. This was yellow and it didn't have a blade on it. I did all the other work first. So this has had like four lifetimes already. This one was designed and ended up just like it is. Okay. But this one's been a work in progress. There's still a lot of work I need to do on the bridge. This one has been a work in progress, but it's kind of done, and hopefully it's going to hang in the Stockholm Hard Rock Cafe. Okay. So this one's going to be retired. So, so you can all the all the listeners and viewers can go check it out. Yeah, they can go check it out, and I might have a way that, you know, while you're there having dinner, it might you know turn on, <laughs> or or it might cool. turn on. Oh, come on, it's tired. There it is. Had a rough night. Come on, there you go. So you know, I might rig it up so every you know, every time somebody that is, that is pretty cool. Every time the bartender gets a good tip, it starts spinning and the lights start blinking and yeah. But yeah, so this is a real, you know, it was fun to put a motor and lasers and other yeah, yeah. kind of crap in it, and that goes along with the theme of Wasp. That there's always been a lot of cool stage props and cool. Yeah. You know, they tell me some of the stories of how they built things. It was way even more crude than that. You know, Blackie and the guys going to the hardware store and buying pieces of wood and they hammering them together and then they make that thing that the woman spins around on. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it's it's all a matter of thinking about it and then yeah. just figuring out a way to, 
to make it into a, a reality. Yeah. So, so for you, a big, big thing in music is not just the actual music, but also like the visual side of it. Well, yeah, it always has been. You know, I've always loved Kiss and Rush and Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin bands that, of course, they play great. If yeah. you never saw what they even looked like in your whole life, you would love their music. Yeah. But then when you see the visuals, whether it's what Zeppelin did, you know, personally, personality-wise, or what Kiss did with makeup, or what Rush did with their light show, and what Pink Floyd did with their stage show, it all becomes part of the whole experience. And yeah. um, Blackie has a great saying that the audience listens with their eyes, yeah. which is really true. I mean, so I take that aspect and just drop it down into my guitars even. Other yeah. people do it in their stage clothes or with their hair or with their tattoos. Yeah, yeah. So I stick it in my guitars. Oh. But these will also, they not only you know are made to look visually memorable or distinctive, they're also, especially these three, are made to be completely musically distinctive, musically effective, meaning that they do more than this one. Yeah. Way more oh. than that one. Oh, oh, hey, whoa, hey, hey. We got some action into the... Hey, whoa. <laughs> Um, maybe should have brought the oh, hey. nah, um, they all fall down all the time. Yeah. And uh, well, yeah, and that's that's the thing. And they're they're pieces of art, but they're also tools, and they're Absolutely. meant to be used for work. But like, I talk with some some uh, guitar players, and they have these super expensive guitars that they are afraid to take from right. their home. Yeah. And and to me, it's just that well, you gotta take them, and you're gonna go outside. You gotta use them. And, and in Finland, because um, the weather changes so much that that mm. even your the wood of the guitars if, bouncing if it's around too, yeah, yeah if you buy a guitar from Spain then it might not yeah. be so good in Finland that's true Spain is so warm and you bring it up here and the wood goes yeah. <laughs> just says no then, way but then you got your special oils and you can, yeah, you can that's try, to, true. try to come back hey it's clear you love guitars oh and, I love and, them and you've been doing seminars in Finland yeah about, I have about, a few. Now I'm gonna have to read because I have to <laughs> So uh, you were doing the Tampere Guitar Festival uh, a couple of days ago. Well, that was yesterday. 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 Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. That was more of a lecture about designing unique instruments that you can use to define your own style. And, you know, same thing. So I've tried to kind of, you know, adopt the theme of the band, but also kind of, you know, kind of evolve it a little bit into something that, you know, really is... Yeah, go on. All right. Go on. I mean, look at Ace Freely with the smoking guitar. Yeah, yeah. When I saw that, I'm like, dude, that's so killer. So, I mean, this is, you know, it's a little bit novelty just to have a spinning blade or whatever. But if somebody sees the band once in their life and they remember, hey, you know, the singer had this amazing mic stand yeah, yeah. that looked like he was going to take off into space, you know. Exactly. And the guitar player had this guitar with a spinning blade on it that could cut people's heads off. Yeah. Just stuff like that is memorable. Yeah. So it's either visual or in other instruments, it's something that people will listen and go, holy crap, how can that guitar make that sound or whatever? Yeah. Or how can you play that thing on that guitar? Which yeah would be different for these three over here. Yeah, and that, that was something, at least for me, when I was a kid, and well, it was still the MTV age. People yeah. used to watch music Oh, you can see everything. It was yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, and then you just look at a guy. Uh, I mean, it, it didn't matter who it was. It could be Tom Morello or Joe yeah. Perry or whoever. Tom's and, great. <laughs> and, and you just look at, like, I want to be that guy. That's real. You're yeah, eight years old. It gives you the that, inspiration to and, do it. Yeah, yeah, you take a tennis racket and you yeah, jump on a bit. Jimmy yeah. Page with his violin yeah. bow, you know, and Jimmy Page with his double neck. It's just like... You see that, and it really goes, it, it really digs deep. But then Eddie Van Halen, you heard him, yeah. and you went, huh? Yeah. Or Ingve even, because yeah, us yeah. guitar players hadn't heard much, you know, classically influenced, violin influenced guitar playing. So we heard Ingve and we were like, and then you have to go home and practice. Yeah, then you give how, up. How do you make it? First you give up. <laughs> and then you, you, you kind, of, kind of realize, well, I guess I don't have to give up. But, you know, they're so good that it makes you want to give up. Yeah, yeah. But it also makes you want to, like, i, I got to yeah. figure this out. It lights a fire under your ass to figure out what you can do to get to that point where people will go, Huh? What the fuck is he doing? So that's the, that's the goal. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of these guys we, we've been talking about now, and yourself included, you're more of um, 
like a old school guys and I'm often thinking of the eight year olds today like who are they they're still looking at the same guys a lot of them so like well when you got guys like Tom Morello you know they're pushing it yeah, yeah. yeah so there's plenty of guys that are pushing it but you're right with the with the overwhelming you know amount of information that is available it's you get smothered yeah you know it's easy for us to find one or two guys that we could idolize because they weren't they weren't smushed between nine million other guys. Exactly, exactly. So you're right. It, it, it does yeah. still go back to, you know, the, the classic guys like Hendrix and, you know, Page and yeah. Jeff Beck. And, and the reason why is because they yeah. still stand above the, the Merc. Yeah. They can still stand out in the field because there is so many millions of, you know, the new guys. But there's a lot of good players in the new, uh, you know, in the last 10 years or so, I would say, you know, they're not even new. They just took a long time yeah, to yeah. get popular. Stephen Wilson from Port Country is a total idol of mine. Devin Townsend has been around, but now he's really showing, you know, people are really realizing how much of a prodigy he is yeah. and how prolific he is as a musician. And, you know, if you can, you know, there's going to be younger guys coming up, but maybe it takes longer to, to find a style now because there's so much competition. Sure.